When SpaceX unveiled their partially reusable rockets, they introduced something we don't often see in real life. Rockets with landing legs. So, when they announced their plans to create a fully reusable rocket, many of us expected a larger version of the same design. But that's not what happened. So, what's the real reason they abandoned the landing legs? To be fair, Starship initially featured landing legs. In fact, SN15 was the first Starship prototype to successfully complete a flight and land safely with the use of these legs. The initial landing leg prototypes were built using a crush core design, inspired by the Apollo lander's landing leg structure. This design features progressively larger holes drilled down the length of the leg, with more metal concentrated toward the top. The crumple zone starts at the base of the legs, absorbing impact as the force increases, requiring more energy to crumple further up. While the legs often sustain damage and deformation after each test, this was expected. SN15 demonstrated that with continued development, SpaceX could eventually perfect the technology and successfully land Starship on its legs, just like what they do with their Falcon 9 rocket. But we all know SpaceX abandoned these legs to develop a new method, which is to catch the ship using the launch tower. The name is Mechazilla, an impressive integration tower standing over 140 metres tall. It consists of steel truss sections, a lightning rod at the top, and a pair of mechanical arms capable of lifting, catching, and recovering the booster. These arms are mounted on a carriage and are controlled by a pulley system located at the top of the tower. The pulley is connected to a winch and spool at the base via a cable. Using the winch and carriage, the arms can move vertically with support from bearings on the carriage's sides. A linear hydraulic actuator enables horizontal movement of the arms. At the top of the arms are tracks that help position the booster or spacecraft. Additionally, the tower is equipped with a quick disconnect arm that extends to and retracts from the Starship spacecraft, performing similar functions to the quick disconnect mount used for the booster. The idea is simple. Mechazilla's two giant arms would clamp and catch each floor of the Starship as the ship returns, eliminating the need for landing legs. Naturally, when people first heard about it, many were skeptical about the feasibility of catching a massive vehicle like Starship in mid-air. Well, until SpaceX did it on their first attempt. Of course, it's incredible that SpaceX is able to pull this off. Every time I watch those massive arms latch onto the booster, it feels like something out of a sci-fi movie. Pure epicness. But the question is, why, after a series of already proven landing methods, did SpaceX choose to go with this completely new approach? Is it all just for the theatrics? To understand this, let's see what Starship would look like when it lands on its landing legs. The first thing to keep in mind is that both Super Heavy and Starship are absolutely massive, about the size of 20-storey buildings. To support their immense weight and withstand the shock of landing, the landing legs would need to be even larger and heavier. We're talking about a significant weight addition. For context, the Falcon 9 booster weighs around 25,000 kilograms, and the landing legs alone at about 2,000 kilograms, around 8% of the total weight. Starship would require even bigger legs, and possibly more of them, perhaps six instead of four. Even if SpaceX, known for its innovative engineering, can make them as lightweight as possible, that's still a hefty amount of extra mass. And to support the weight of Super Heavy, those legs would need to be incredibly strong, meaning they'd likely need to be even sturdier, and in turn, heavier. What about landing on a drone ship? like the Falcon 9 does. Well, that would require some seriously extensive landing infrastructure. The landing platform often takes a beating from the rocket, but with Falcon 9, it's not a huge issue because it's not an incredibly powerful rocket. Super heavy, however, could cause significant damage to the drone ship during its descent. And then there's the risk of things being kicked up and potentially damaging the booster itself. Even if the landing goes smoothly without any damage, reusing the drone ship would take considerable time, as it would need to be transported back from the sea before it could be used again. There is another method that SpaceX is still using regularly with its Dragon spacecraft, which is parachute landing. Again, Starship is really heavy. 
Super Heavy weighs around 200 metric tons, which is a massive difference compared to something like Crew Dragon, which slows down using parachutes and weighs around 12,000 kilograms. Parachutes wouldn't make much of a dent for something that large. Plus, parachutes are relatively imprecise. They're fine for landing in a broad area, but they aren't ideal for a pinpoint landing at a launch pad. And let's not forget, parachutes are heavy, which means they'd only add even more mass to an already enormous booster, something SpaceX would want to avoid. Weight reduction is definitely a key factor, but what Elon always emphasizes about the Mechazilla method is the real game changer. It gives Starship the ability to be rapidly reused. That quick turnaround is a huge advantage. The concept behind the rapid reuse of Starship is all about eliminating the need to refit the booster between launches. The goal is to perform basic checks, refuel it, and have it ready for another launch. Possibly within hours or even less, not days. This is where landing legs become an issue, since Falcon 9 requires refurbishment between flights. To make this work, the landing infrastructure would need to handle frequent use and the rockets themselves would need to land without causing damage to either the booster or its surroundings. This is why catching the rocket in mid-air, rather than letting it land on the ground, is so crucial. It protects everything on the ground while still bringing the rocket back in one piece. It looks like, at least for now, SpaceX has found the perfect method for its giant ship. Here's how it plays out. It all begins when the Super Heavy's boosters shut down, a critical moment SpaceX calls most engines cut off instead of the usual main engine cut off. This is because while most of the engines stop firing, three remain lit. Then stage separation happens. As the Starship soars onward, the boosters reignite for the boost backburn. Meanwhile, the upper stage of Starship lights its own engines and Super Heavy begins its journey back to Boca Chica, Texas the launch site. Before the booster could return, however, automated checks were crucial. SpaceX ran diagnostics to ensure everything was in peak condition. If something had gone wrong, the booster would have been ditched into the gulf. But the checks were a success and the command was given. Super Heavy was cleared for landing. With the boost backburn complete, the engines shut down and the thrusters on the side fired up to steer the rocket on its descent. Beneath the booster, you could see the engine glowing fiercely, not from the active burn, but from the intense heat generated by re-entry. The landing burn itself came in stages. First, 13 Raptor engines fired up to slow the booster's descent, then reduced to just three as it neared the pad. In a breathtaking maneuver, the booster slowed to a near hover, performed a horizontal slide, and lined up perfectly with the massive chopstick arms of the launch tower. These arms closed around the booster, catching it with precision just before the final engine cut off. The world held its breath. And SpaceX had just pulled off another remarkable feat. After the first catch, there were a few signs of the outer engine warping from the intense heat, and the booster's body also showed some signs of scorching. However, SpaceX didn't back down. They pushed forward, refining the process with each successive flight. After the sixth flight, they had made significant improvements, strengthening the small weather antenna on top and adding new sensors to Mechazilla's massive metal arms for a more precise capture. With each iteration, they grew faster and more efficient, reducing the time it took for the final landing process. This wasn't just for convenience, it was to minimize the potential damage the booster might cause to the launch tower itself. While it hasn't been done yet, SpaceX has plans to catch the upper stage of Starship as well. The catching pins have already been installed on the ship, and once SpaceX resolves the challenges with Starship Vive 2 and confirms that the spacecraft can safely land, they're ready to move forward. The test catch could happen as soon as the 10th flight, marking another bold step toward perfecting full stage recovery. Now, does this mean Starship will never have landing legs? Not exactly. As Elon has mentioned, landing legs will still be needed for the lunar or Mars versions of Starship, at least until SpaceX builds Mechazilla for those locations too. And when that happens, would be a great outcome for civilization. Building such a massive structure on another planet is certainly hard to imagine.
but it's essential for establishing a long-term human presence there. As always, NASA has taken the first steps toward making this a reality. NASA has teamed up with commercial partners on some ambitious projects, one of the most recent being a six-year, $57.2 million deal with ICON, a Texas-based company specializing in in-situ resource utilization, 3D printing technologies. With its progress on the Artemis program, NASA aims to return to the moon within this decade and stay there. Achieving this goal will require extensive infrastructure, including landing sites, vehicles, and habitats. This new award continues ICON's work under a Small Business Innovation Research SBIR, dual-use contract with the U.S. Air Force, which is partly funded by NASA. The Phase 3 SBIR award will support the development of ICON's Olympus Construction System, designed to utilize local resources from the Moon and Mars as building materials. The contract runs through 2028 and is valued at $57.2 million. ICON will collaborate with NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, as part of the STMD's Moon to Mars Planetary Autonomous Construction Technologies, MMPACT, project. NASA is working with industry, government, and academic institutions through MMPACT. This award builds on ICON's commercial efforts and previous NASA collaborations. The company 3D printed a 1,700-square-foot simulated Martian habitat, Mars Dune Alpha, which will be used in NASA's Crew Health and Performance Analog, CHAPIA, mission beginning in 2023. Additionally, ICON participated in NASA's 3D Printed Habitat Challenge, partnering with the Colorado School of Mines in Golden to win a prize for 3D printing a structure sample that was tested for its seal, strength, and durability under extreme temperatures. We used to think landing a rocket meant it needed legs or something similar. But SpaceX has shown us how technology evolves in unexpected ways. And that's what makes the future so thrilling to anticipate. 